Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Dumas. And this is the Garbutt Dumas Real Estate Podcast. Well, the ongoing story of 2022 is interest rates, Monica. And it seems like there's no stopping in sight, right? <laughs> Uh, The Bank of Canada announced another 0.75 increase in the overnight rate. That results in the prime rate going up 0.75%. That results in your variable mortgage going up. If you have a static payment variable mortgage, you're probably paying the same thing unless you're getting close to that uh, fringe point thing. What is that called? Because you're asking me, I don't know. We're going to call it fringe point thing. Fringe point. (laughs) (laughs) You heard it first here. Which which basically means if your payment gets to... um, 100% 100% paying interest, the bank is going to ask you to increase your payment or um, put some chunk of money down into the principal uh, or your variable rate mortgage payments go up every month. So now we've seen a 3% increase in uh, the prime rate over the last seven months and potentially could go up again. We get the question all the time of like, is this the last one? When is this going to end? What is this going to do to the housing market? And I think the honest answer from most of us is, is we have no clue. Absolutely <laughs> like, no We clue. can't predict it. What we can tell you is what's going on today. <clears throat> and we'll kind of share a quick update of what we are seeing in the last couple of weeks since uh, we've rounded the corner over the uh, Labor Day long weekend. But um, interest rates are up. They may have another increase later this year. I think the next meeting is towards the end of October, so uh, <laughs> to be determined. Right. I don't think that anyone was really surprised at the rate. I mean, everyone knows that the rates are going are going back up. They were at an all time low, so we expect them to climb. I think that um, it's a bit shocking how quickly they've decided to um, raise the interest rates. I think it's it seems very much like a re like overreaction. I think. Uh, probably pacing it a little bit better would be smarter. I know they said, oh, we're going to front load it. We're going to really like nip this in the bud, that kind of thing. But it's really, really dangerous when you have, um, you know, families that are in committed financial situations and um, it it puts a lot of stress on people financially. And it's a matter of time before we start seeing people um, selling their homes prematurely to get out of mortgages, maybe even foreclosures by, by the spring. So I think it's... Um, it definitely needed to kind of regulate and hope, hopeful that our inflation rate uh, percentage will go back down. But it is a little dangerous how they're doing it. It seems like from from where I'm sitting, um, it's it's one of those things where in the past we would hear things from all different uh, professionals that we work with. And, and a lot of times some of the rumors that we hear are true. A lot of times in the past they've been true, but we're kind of hearing things all over the place. I've heard that they're going to raise it another you know, 75 basis points next uh, announcement. I've heard that they're not, they're going to raise it 25. You know, it's, um, it's all over the place. It's really unpredictable. And all I can say is just like protect yourselves, make sure you're saving the money and, uh, and put yourself in a position where you can take care of your mortgages. It's interesting. A couple of points. One is inflation has started coming down, which is, I think it peaked in June of 2022 at 8.1%. And the latest I've seen was 7.6. So it is coming down. So I guess what they are trying to achieve is working. The I agree with you, though, how quickly they've increased them just makes me feel like there's going to be this rebound effect. And at some point, whether it is next spring, summer 2024, at some point, there's probably going to be a quick drop in interest rates back to like a steady number, which... I'm going to guess is somewhere around 3 to 3.5. Right now, Prime just went up from 4.7 to 5.25. That seems a little bit high <laughs> comparatively to the last decade. Um, so I would I would think that like the comfortable number where we're not getting these crazy bidding wars and um, people are not losing their homes is somewhere in that like mid three range. So I could see it coming down quickly when it starts coming down. I just don't know if that's going to be in 2023 or not. Yeah, it's it's all very interesting. I mean, um, don't you kind of wonder, like, why do they wait so long to even raise the rates again? Like, where where, where was the thought yeah. here? You know, um, it's it is what it is. Um, yeah, it's just an interesting process to watch. So many things that happened yeah. during the last two and a half years 
when COVID came. Yeah. Were peculiar. Yeah. Right? The amount of money that the government gave out to like people who didn't need it, the interest rates going down to zero essentially to spark spending during the pandemic was kind of strange. Like there's so many things that you just scratch your head about. And this is just another one of them, right? They're counteracting some bad decisions, I think, that happened in the last two and a half years and trying to just uh, overcompensate for for some mistakes, it seems like. Uh, but it just seems like they're overcompensating with another mistake that is going to have another overcompensation in six months from now. Yeah, because realistically, when you change a rate like this, to, uh, the amount that they've changed it, how much time needs to go by for them to see what that change did to affect the market. More than 30 days. More than 30 days. (laughs) I can tell you that that is for sure. It's more than 30 days. It's got to be six months. Six months. Okay. That's the new rule government. It's six months. Yeah. One bank account (laughs) meeting every six months. Okay. (laughs) Monica and I will be at the next meeting proposing this new legislation. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we'll kind of share what's, I, I mean, we get the questions all the time of like, if they keep going up, our price is going to keep going down. And I mean, the answer is we have no clue. Like we can't predict the future. We don't know. The problem still remains is that there's not enough supply. And it's actually quite interesting to see that the inventory in Greater Vancouver is still below the 10-year average, uh, even though we've had now five or six months of slowdown with interest rates climbing. Uh, So it just leads me to believe that like once this stabilizes potentially rates come down a touch in the next year or two, we're just going to have the same problem of low supply. Like you would think in a slowdown where buyer activity is down, where sales volume is down quite a bit, that inventory would start to build up and that's not not the case. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about what we've seen in the market the last few weeks. I mean, since they've increased the interest rate, we've been really busy. I mean, for fall, not as busy. Totally, It's been strange. Like August often is one of the slowest months of the year. uh, And it was a slower month this year in terms of sales volume. There was very few new listings that came up. Buyers were kind of frustrated and being like, well, we have nothing to go see. Yeah. And, and as soon as Labor Day long weekend comes and goes, usually that's when we see a pretty big influx of activity, new listings, buyers kind of get back out there. They're back from vacations. Kids are back in school. They kind of get back into their routine. And it happened again, even though there was another 0.75 increase. We've seen just on our handful of listings that the last two weeks have been much more active in terms of showings. Almost all of them have received an offer in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. A couple Everything of, that's been on the market has received offers, new, like a few new listings sold within a few days. Um, yeah, it's been... I'm busy. There's a couple listings that were very quiet through the summer that were on market for a couple months and in the last seven days have got accepted offers at pretty good numbers. And then there was that one townhouse listing that we had in US last week that got multiples in two days and sold at a, the highest number in the co- record, complex. Record sale for the complex, yeah. even against like end units and really renovated units. It was, a, it was a surprise to us. I mean, we knew it was great, but we, you know, to be fair, we priced it worth room to negotiate down because that was what we were seeing all summer like that was really unexpected yeah it kind of leads me to believe that the the good stuff so this was a two-bedroom townhouse yeah in a pretty good location in new west the it leads me to believe the good stuff that is priced correctly that is in the more affordable range is still going to be quite active just because there is not enough of it versus the multi-million dollar homes the teardown homes, the stuff that needs work, those are going to need to be priced really conservatively in, in a word that is not aggressive because mm-hmm. usually I word aggressively. Uh, conservatively to, I think, get action this fall. There's more of those like teardown, um, original condition, 1940s, 50s homes for sale. There is not enough townhomes for families available, like even built, but available for sale. Townhomes and move-in ready, low-end detached is just where it's at. If you have a townhouse or detached, it's still selling. um, And the interest rates haven't slowed down this process, hardly at all. No, we're not having 60 showings and 15 offers, 
but they're selling quickly mm -hmm. and you have to get out to see them right away when they list. And if you like it, you need to send your offer in. Like that's just, that is what it is. Um, you do have time right now to do your due diligence. You do have, um, you know, a few days to, to look at it usually, but there's been properties that my clients have liked um, detached in the 1.4 to 1.6 range that have sold with zero days on market. Like it listed, this one property was awesome, listed and sold full price that day. So you do have to kind of take the fall market seriously and the interest rates don't seem to be affecting it, which goes right back to what we've said so many times is the Vancouver real estate market does not have enough property. There aren't enough homes to go around. So, so it creates this very robust, very resilient market that you can't fight with interest rates. Like people still need homes. It just changes the prices a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, a little bit of a slower fall. The good properties are still going to sell. Buyers have more time to do due diligence. Subjects are in offers. So what you're saying is you're really excited for this cooling off period. I love the cooling off period. <laughs> you know what though? What happens in markets like this, because sellers are smart in BC. Sellers in Vancouver are smart and these homes are investments for them. They look forward to their retirement, like cashing out. So sellers take a lot of care. It's not, it's not like other markets around the world. It's not like other markets, even in North America. It's, they will hold onto their property for three years and wait for the right market and then sell. So what happens in markets like this is there's just garbage on the market. There's nothing on the market except for things that people have to sell quickly. And, and that's what kind of creates these little micro competitive markets, basically, because there's just nothing available. That's a good point. I think a lot of consumers and a lot of um, established realtors understand that these downturns are pretty short lived. And so a lot advice to a lot of clients that we have conversations with is, do you need to move right now? If you're upsizing, great opportunity. Let's do it. It just might be a bit of a challenge to move that two bedroom condo or you know whatever you're selling versus the downsizer who's who's like been thinking about it, not necessarily sure. The advice is hang on for a year or two. Yeah. Let's reconvene in the spring and see what the market is like there. But you may be giving up two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars selling this fall versus waiting twelve to eighteen months. And a lot of those types of people are like, sounds good. We'll, we'll talk to you next year. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens in a month when the interest rate goes up again. <laughs> like what? Enough's enough, right? Like what's going to be the breaking point for the market in Vancouver? I really don't know. I don't think anyone does. Nope. <laughs> <laughs>